Hey, Keith, when are we going to get into being able to discharge some debt? Um, most, most people should be starting to work with that full acquittance and discharge note. Yeah, right. That, that's, that's your discharge and acquittance. All you got to do is have a receipt. A receipt is something that you received as the intended recipient. So, okay. okay. I've got a receipt, you know, like when we purchase our house or a car, we get a receipt and we securitized on it, you know, but that debt is still there a little bit. So we could get a refund back on that debt. Couldn't we, that when we bought our car or house with it also, couldn't we? Right. This, this is what, what they call a deficiency. And if you look in their definitions, again, we're going back to one USC one, everything's always backwards and upside down. Just like Van, uh, uh, Da Vinci used to do with his drawings and stuff. He used to do a lot of funky shit. They're still doing it today. They're doing it with the language and singular is plural and plural is singular. So a deficiency is actually a excess. Okay. And that's what we're calling. We're calling back the deficiency. The deficiency is they, they, they have failed to recognize the full equivalent amount of your fair value. And that's because you haven't given it to them. Once we learn how to construct that and give it to them according to our words so that their commercial transactions don't apply, that is the true value, is getting rid of the value. The value is already there and freely giving what we were given freely. That's the true grant. That's the true trust. Anytime you start writing stuff down on paper and call it a trust, it's a false trust. Every word of God is pure and it is a shield unto him who have faith or have trust in God. That is the express trust right there. I need nothing else but the pure word of God. And I have full faith in that. And that's why I search for every answer in the Bible or in, in spiritual scriptures, because it's not just in the Bible. It's in the Torah, the Quran, the Tao, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, all of it. They all have the same concept. This is one of those things that I, I appreciate the fact that I went through so many different foster homes because in each one I went to a different church. And knowing now that all those different churches why are they so different if the main principle is always the same? And lo and behold, if you look in the right places, even the U.S. code is the same. The UCC is the same. As long as you recognize it. UCC 3-402B. Uh, as long as you're giving an un, uh, 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 authorized signature as an unambiguous authorized representative on the instrument, you are not liable for the person named in the instrument. This is what tells us that no matter how you do it, you cannot be held liable for a signature. Just do it the regular way. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's use every God, every word of God and make it a pure trust. I want to know what Mike thinks discharging debt is. Like what do you okay, think that I, mean? I, okay, here's here's where I was going to go with this. I, I said what I said to come back to this because I got a bill from the gas company and it's not a, they're not saying a bill and there's not a coupon on here. And and so when it comes here to pay the part on it that you know what you would think is a coupon is not a coupon, okay? It says here, bring this bill in if you're paying in person or detach the portion if you're paying by mail. Okay. So it doesn't never say coupon and it doesn't say how to pay it, but it says here monthly bank draft is available. So it's giving you these options, but, it, but it's not like a average, you know, these others, it'll, they'll have some of my have. I'll say, this is a coupon. But yeah, you're, you're, you're just, you're just getting away too. It's all every, every last thing they send you is a bill. Okay. Even if it's just a court document somewhere along the line, they are seeking commercial items. That means it isn't there yet. They are still seeking it. They are trying to bill you no matter how you look at it. 
and this is an obligation or other security of the United States. That, so you said it exactly right. That's what I was trying to bring to your attention because it'll say here, make checks payable to, it keeps dancing around that. They're, they're, they're leapfrogging, saying it's a payment and it's obligation, but it's not in reality, I don't think. I think right. they're playing it's, us for a fool. It's a charge. And so what you need to do is discharge it through full acquittance. And this is your redemption process, because what you're doing is you're, you're saying these guys have made a false accusation against this person saying it, 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 it owes a debt where in fact they got the funds in order to franchise this person from the person that they're claiming the debt against which is the United States. You it's said the that, United yeah. States that has the priority interest in all commercial transactions because they have to provide the first insurance. The states provide the second insurance, which is the social security. It's an inland marine insurance. So all of it, all of it is insurance. And that, as Lori pointed out the other night on Wednesday night Zoom, the stamp is proof of payment of the insurance. So what we do is we take that bill, we copy it, we make an affidavit with that notice of memorandum of obligations for full acquittance of discharge according to the Trading with the Enemies Act, 50 U.S.C. 4305 B, uh, B2, and assign the interest back to the United States. Now the United States has been named as the party, and it, they are the indispensable party. Now they have to pay attention because if they don't and you turn around and they try to deny it, you turn around and send it right to the United States. Hey, I sent these guys this bill for them to take care of on your behalf because they are your trustee as you're the grantee of the foreign trade zone. They're the resident, not me. They're claiming of a, a debt against a resident that belongs to you. Yep. That's you the said transmitting utility. That's yep. what the SS5 did. It gave you authorized to use the transmitting utility, but you're signing it and you're not liable. Why is that? Because they're the public trustee, not you. You have never taken an oath. You can't possibly be a public trustee without that oath. You can't possibly be a public grantee without an oath. You said that exactly right, Keith, and everything is an insurance. Like you were saying, that's how they get out of the fraud part. You know, like when you get an automobile and you register it with them, the reason why they want you to register it is they're giving you the opportunity to insure it. You know, cause if you go buy a new $40,000 car, the bank says, okay, we're going to give you this proceeds right here, but you have to have an insurance policy on it in case something happens to it, right? You know, your freight. Okay. So insurance backs it everywhere. There's a, a, a bond is put in place. That for bond it. names the principal and the surety. If you ain't on it, then you're obviously the beneficiary. Okay. And you know what, what you just said, that's the reason why I brought this up is it still applies to the birth certificate account. There was a bond put in place when that was originated for, I've heard $10 million bond is in place to cover. But there's no every. insurance on it. Nobody ever puts a stamp on it to insure it. That's the insurance. You, the insurance is a United States postage stamp. Now who's the insurer? You, the, the postal service, which is under the international public trust. And they are, they are under service, both the Admiralty and maritime side. Now that's an internal security and they insured it. Not you. Okay. You so bought that it bond, from them. Okay, okay. So the $10 million they sold bond you the insurance. Okay. The $10 million bond is in place, but I don't activate it until I put the postal stamp on it and claim it. And, and do the banker's acceptance. Right. Banker's acceptance, which is the same thing as is synonymous with a certified check, a cashier's check, a money order, international bill of exchange, a um, couple other things. They're all the same thing. They're negotiable instruments. And that's all we're doing is negotiating. But the thing is that nobody's paying the taxes and therefore the negotiations go by the wayside. Yes. When you pay, show that the I, I have to say, paid. Keith, that people who have implemented that they, what happens, at least in the experience of people who have done it, is they will just dis discharge that first month, but 
they're also closing people's accounts because they don't want to have credit. Well, and that's that's a problem then because they have a fiduciary duty by extending the the uh, um, the offer. And what I think the problem is that people aren't ex expressing that you're not getting it. We're not a resident. We're at the end of the, the line. We're at the last mile. We are the end user. It, it and, seems to be that uh, if you send it into the utility company and they, they know that you're not sending it to the FCC or the FTC or something like that, that they'll still get their federal funding because even if they close your account. So as usual, so if they don't higher, know higher. that you are talking to people above their head that can affect their federal funding, that's what they do. Well, Malika, that's the bond. Yeah. That contract that you just described, the GSA, that's the actual bond that the Mike. Yeah, and I'm, I'm saying that when you communicate directly with just the, the utility provider. Yeah, the commissioner. The utility provider. Okay. When you communicate only with the utility provider directly like the people in customer service when you call hi this is so and so energy how can i help you they turn they're turning off people's account this like, is this is why right this is what well, we so that's why you know, we've got to talk to the commissioners these are the people right that are, that's what i'm trying to tell people the if, they, if they think that if they don't if they know that the ftc and the fcc are not involved in that uh you know certificate of service like they're involved in the conversation and they think, oh, okay, this is just some peon customer. I'm just letting you guys know they're turning. They're like, you can't get service from us. They're not charging you like the bill, whatever they were charging you goes away, but they're they, they're not honoring you continuing to have an account because they just don't want to have the credit. They don't want to have the credit. Yeah. 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 See, that's what I was thinking when you were talking about that because uh, I was reading about the SF30. It's a modification of a bond. Basically, it's a contract with a service. So the utilities commission has a, they go into contract to provide a service to the end user that's at a certain location, not yes, an address. We found all of the, uh, uh, of the government wide area, area wide service agreements. He's found them all. We found the, uh, on the FAR uh, acquisition.gov, they have every single state and not just every single state, every single regional utility, we found that. Okay, we've taken out the parts that say they absolutely have to provide service, et cetera. Uh, again, oh, when, okay. them, but when they know that you're not talking to anybody that can affect their federal funding, all I'm saying is they, they will honor your whatever now. your $500 bill and then they don't want to give you any service at all. That's all I'm saying. So it's important. Yeah, I, you, just, I just wanted this, to add to the 1414, the, the 1414 and 1416, the SF. Those are ones that you can add with their with that those bonds to where you're claiming the beneficiary role. Of they the already user. know you're the beneficiary yeah, because they that's the reason that, that they stuff. got the the service. They got the <laughs> funding to, to run but the lines. Not, and right, right, but they're in breach. That's what I'm trying for the guy before Mike and they're in breach of their, their duty. They've mixed up the roles. And right. so they that's need to what be we're told, doing right? by point. That's but what we're doing by going to the commissioner. We're not using forms. We're just pointing out copy yeah. paste their own words. Yeah. You're not supposed yeah, to. Yeah, that's shut what I mean. When somebody makes a dispute, right? We're not here making the okay. dispute. They are. I don't use the we're forms, correct. but I do. Look They're at disputing it for that correction. Can't do that. Of course, there's no form to say. Um, yeah, you've no, already been just... paid for this service that yeah, you're providing a... to me. <laughs> but they, they don't do make a form for that. Yes, but I but here's do know what that we, there's certain yes, information girls, that they want. Girls, here's what we got to do. We got to point out there's a mistake, okay? And then come we back. We are pointing out it's a mistake. I'm, I'm just telling everybody, yes. if you point out the mistake to customer service at whatever L FPNL, Florida Power and Light, or whatever you want to call your provider, as long as you keep it on that level, you're not going to get anywhere and you're going to have to go through things every month over and over and over instead of just having them set your account to, to a, to, and we have one person who's gotten this done and uh, it's set to uh, pay by draft. They actually sent them a notice saying that their account is going to be paid by draft, which means out of their account that they already have the money in. 
America. Because the only right. people they're supposed to be charging are the ones using the electricity service <laughs> in interstate and foreign commerce. Right. That's the right. only yeah. class of person they're supposed to be charging. So the mistake is that we are just the end user using it at, in, in our, in our uh, private capacity. We're not running a, a gym, a hair salon, et cetera, et cetera. Because yeah. that's yeah. what our bills are set in there at. And as that's they're, the, as they're running a business with the service. And that's the importance of understanding that UCC in regards to the definition of draft and draw. We are the ones that draft. We are the ones that are planning this stuff because they're going by their job. They're doing by, by something that's already prescribed to them to do. We have to plan our, our future. And so we have to draft it just like any other engineer. We have to en engineer our future. We have to make it custom to our own situation. And in order to do that, we have to draft the order for the person to pay. That, uh, that is an assignment. That's what the, the, the uh, discharge and acquittance is. It's an assignment for them to draw the order. You drafted it, giving them the truth, and they're supposed to draw the order. This is the thing about those certified checks when you're operating a private trust and you have a banker with a medallion stamp signature guarantee as a trustee. They don't write checks off of an account. It's already drafted. And therefore they just make payments and they assign a private security number and they sign it as trustee specifically noting that it is a trust instrument and not just some regular commercial order to pay on a bilateral or uh, uh, unilateral contract. It proves it's a trust through a draft and a drawing. So We're you're assigning them the successor trustee position basically and Correct. saying, hey, look, you're the one with the fiduciary duty here. I'm, I'm the beneficiary. I'm not engaged in commerce. That's your role. That's your military person. So do what you're supposed to do. Or we're going to have to fire you and appoint someone else. Correct? Correct. Okay. And now we're actually giving an assignment. Before they're just appointed. They're just appointed as a public trustee. And that's what that oath is all about. That's for the public. When you come from the private side and let them know, hey, I'm the beneficiary on the private side. And the beneficiary is deemed to be the true owner. You're using my name. I am the true owner of this case. Everything, every subject matter in it, I am the true owner. I don't care whether you profess some kind of territorial jurisdiction. You originated it in that territorial jurisdiction without cause. I didn't give you permission to use it in a detrimental fashion against me in profit of your person that you don't want to recognize is actually the indispensable 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which belongs to the United States. The states didn't come up with the 14th Amendment. United States did. Why? Because United States is the military faction that controls all commerce and has since 1862. That's when they started doing all the public land grants, the Morrill Act. You know, they went out and surveyed the land, nothing less than two acres west of the Mississippi and blew a little whistle and everybody started running down the fields on their horses and there were flags all over. And as soon as you got to that property and grabbed that flag, you claimed that flag. It was posted. And I, I didn't live back then, but I guarantee it's probably red flags. So you could see them real clear. That, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that should be a red flag, folks. <laughs> now they're purple. Yeah. Shoot, shoot at will a purple poster out there and someone comes on a private property. Well, where did the government get the authority to grant lands if they had to purchase it first? The land shall not be sold forever for it is mine. Ye are strangers. So that was King George and the Treaty of Peace. Wasn't it wasn't it King Charles or George and the Treaty of Peace that did all that land granting? I don't care. It was it was it's blasphemy. It's, it's like it's like the uh, the, the United States Supreme Court granting certificates. 
they, if they yeah. have no power uh, <laughs> from their charter to do that, then it doesn't matter if they gave a zillion of them. They're still all, in, uh, you know, invalid. That's why I you say. Yeah, like the Tennessee Valley Authority Act. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say These there people- is no certification on public record in the United States of America or any state of the union that is true and correct. Yeah, because none of them have affidavits. Well, not only that, but yeah, they don't use their right they, legal name. Well, but that's they, the problem when you use well, the affidavit. Even just affidavit. using a legal name tells you it's a presumption. All you got to do is beat, beat the presumption. <laughs> What's the presumption? That I use a legal name? Just because I use a name doesn't mean it's a legal name. Because Correct. a legal name would prefer would 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 uh, presume that I'm performing commercially. That's I the legal promise name. that I'm going to uphold all of your nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> all eight million codes and ordinances that are up to their yes. discretion. Yeah. Uh, uh, all of them. Yes. I, I fear I, not I, one I of them. I fear not one of them. Eight million codes make it eight hundred mm-hmm. million codes. I, I will know. Fear one That's of what them. I say. Well, I have been a billion billion code. He called me by name. And that is the name I use. I am his. Now, what kind of claim do you have against this? Uh, 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 I have this yeah. uh, uh, code that uh, I'm charging you under. Well, let me see your uh, 48 uh, CFR 52.215. <laughs> You'll never forget that. N- never. Neither will... Uh, uh, oh boy, Rodney Class won't forget it either, now will he? No. He already, <laughs> put, he already put that in a document. I'm about to send it back to you. He already added um, added that. Uh, rule 5.5. And one other thing that we go over all the time. <laughs> He's yep. like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm adding this to the document right here. <laughs> yeah, I want to I wanna ask everybody. Does, does the Constitution speak at all about land grants? No, because they don't yeah. have no... It, it, so the where do they get the their authority to talk about, about land, land grants in their federal statutes or state statutes? Well, it does talk about land grants in the Constitution. In Article 1, Section 8, well, Clause 17, it says that land has to be granted to the government. And when that land is granted to them, they can only use it for arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings like schools, post offices, and stuff like that. Yeah, so where did the <laughs> government get the land granted to them to use as those such things, and then extend that use for educational, um, engineering, um, cultivation? Um, that's why I adopted the mm-hmm. Library of Congress, because that's what they extend. Well, the, Just like fish farming. They that extend was the, the fish Oregon. farming to desert lands through aquaculture. Well, it's condemned, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this You're is in the, hell this now. Is, see, this is the thing about un, about comprehending your right of passage and your right of portage. If you have the right to pass over the land, don't you have the right to port water to the dry lands to make it cultivatable? In, in that your primary purpose in the biblical scripture is to replenish the earth. What are we going to replenish the earth with? just the food or if if the earth is dry shouldn't we be replenishing it with water we are that intelligent to be able to pour water from the from the shoreline inland and i assure you that it takes no inland marine insurance for me to carry water anywhere that's what everybody's forgetting i'm a man of land what about the water that's your superior right. And that's why they use the water submerged or the land submerged as though it's condemned and then use it as real estate investment for people that want a fish farm. Because it's the only way, only way they can use it because it's submerged. Yeah. That's the only way you can condemn land is by submerging it. Therefore, if it's not condemned, then whose is it, daddy? Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that water his too? I'll be damned. These suckers ain't got a rule one. Not one ordinance that stands because I was sanctified and ordained a prophet unto the nations, 
not a nation myself. Therefore, I don't claim nationality. I claim the house of Judah with the surname of Israel, with the earthly father's name of little. They, they, they have someone posted some nonsense about, about that earlier today. And, you know, they're still with the land patents and the paperwork, you know, about nonsense and you got to declare your status and, you know. I ain't got to declare nothing. I already said, I all, fear all not. That, I have all been that redeemed. Is, I have been called me by him. name. I am his. That is my status. You want anything else? It's false. I guarantee you. Oh, they you. said that there's a problem with people being stateless and I still can't see what the problem is. Me either. I don't, I don't know um, <laughs> how they get beyond Jeremiah 1.5. I was sanctified and ordained a prophet unto the nations. That means I can't be a nation. I can't be a state within a nation. I am a prophet unto them. Yeah, over all of them. Yes. I have as much power in my little pinky as all of the, the nations of the world together. And I don't even need to use it to write. I, can I use think my they index just finger. get confused about it. They think they get confused about giving notice, which is equitable, as opposed to changing their status and recognizing the difference between the juridic person, which, you know, that whole yeah. thing last year, Malika, when we all did that through the canal and the railroadways. I mean, that really helped me to see how complex their story is and how there really aren't any real records, except for like maybe at the, uh, cartel the american medical cartel that has real records of the man and woman you know most of them are under false names yeah and realize too people you know back in the day it was the church that kept records of the community members today it's the military through a commercial government and the military's entire point if there's no war their entire purpose is commercial to sustain themselves commercially because they can't sustain themselves by going out and farming. They have to be somewhere on a base training and being uh, making strategic plans in case this happens or in case this. And that's the fruit, the poisonous fruit of the tree of knowledge. If you're always planning for war, then you will never ever attain peace never this is why i tell you you got to come out of uh, out of that internal conflict and get peace with yourself and realize that these people that are in these wars are in that same internal conflict and it's our job to help bring them out let those be fooled that be fooled but like Lori said it's only equity that we let them know the truth I wouldn't want to be fooled, and I'm upset. I am highly upset that nobody taught me this before I was 50 years old. So many of my friends are also upset for the exact same reason, regardless of what their age is. <laughs> Excuse my passion. Hey, no need, brother. No need. It's stuff to get angry about, and it's those that kind of let it just roll off their back, like, it's no big deal. Like, yeah, but you'll notice that they always want to declare a state of emergency or military. That's how they occupy oh, this. Nonsense. Because they have to, they have to, it says in the constitution, they can only do certain things in the state of emergency. And that's why they just continue to declare emergency. And never Listen, the emergency. emergency is the falsity in the belief that you have to have somebody else take care of your value in whatever form you believe it to be. True. I do not believe in separating myself from what I believe to be value, because I am my own value. There is nothing greater say. than me. That's what I say. That's what I say. I'm the money. I am the value. Yeah, we're the only substance is us. This, our, this world labor, doesn't have a substance. That's right. Our labor is the only thing of value. The heart of a man is the only thing of value. And when, they, when people try to, like, they're chasing money, they're like, secure the bag and all this stuff, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 all the fiction of your mind, and and you hear people tell you all the time, keep keep those positive thoughts. Think about that stuff. It will build your day. 
I used to sit there. I got in trouble like a lot of people like me in, in school. You know, I, I was daydreaming because I didn't want to listen to the bullshit the teacher kept trying to shove down my throat or shove up my ass. While kids behind me, always the new kids, shoving pencils in me and teasing me and, and chasing me after school. I got done running when I was 10 years old and started fighting. I've not been a good person all my life. And it's hey, only Keith, hey, nobody Keith. else. It's only because nobody else. Keith, if everything. The responsibility to teach me what is actually true. Right. They were all just doing their job. Okay. If everything is military, can't we come out of that? And then yeah. we're set. Malik has said it many times, and I've expressed it many times. You're born in a, a, a spell of illness in, as a foundling in a hospital. You find yourself by knowing thyself. That's right. And then you, all you have to do is profess it. I'm not doing any documentation, folks. I created my site over a year ago, and I'm letting the information. You, you go look at my site and see all the adoptions, see all the <laughs> notices, and I'm just going to let it trickle down because every time somebody wants to come at, I got almost every bit of information to use against everyone that ever wants to come against me. And I know all the scriptures that they come from. Yep. I think it's important for people to change their address to a location because it's just like giving notice. It's equity. It's letting them know. I just let it fade away. It is actually, they actually recognize it as two separate jurisdictions. I just let it fade away. I use it, a again, address. it doesn't matter if they if they to have jurisdiction over that particular address or whatever you want to call it over that location at that address or whatever. It still has to be ceded to and or owned by right, the United right. of America and documented as such. But that's what so they're right. pretending. Yeah, that's they're wait, wait a I don't care. They're if also I live in a location why, or I live in an address. Why fight that matters? Jurisdiction if you can just give them a notice. Let me ask what? you guys something. What? Why, why do you I don't care when I when let me, I get let me ask you guys something. Mailing me a letter, I don't you care guys, if the letter comes to a location or an address as long as it gets to me. Yeah, do you guys it's understand still none what of the, their business? You guys don't understand what the Bureau of Land Management is. That's for the federal government. So, what is the federal zip zoning improvement plan all about? What land do they really have a zone in? But if not a one of right not here. a one of them reaches your doorstep. This yeah, right here, this is where it is. If someone claims to be it, that's what they're going to be. So I, I, Then so just don't claim it. Why right. claim an address so at all? It's real easy to say, hey, look, I'm not a part of that. Yeah. It's equitable to give notice. It is. I'll give them a notice saying, oh, you have my <laughs> thing written as an address, but it's actually a location. It's still going to be the same exact address to, yeah. to the location. Yeah. No, it's actually recognized different in their databases. It doesn't matter when someone no, writes it, an address on your thing. If it's got an address, else, it's not it's not identified by the survey. They are two distinct things. If it's a survey, right. there is a military survey that removed it from the land records period. Therefore, there cannot be an address. Okay, okay so that's well, why we've got to go then. We got to go with this military survey to establish our water rights and everything. And then it's all downhill because it wouldn't matter where the, where your mail came from or anything. So the fundamental basics we're missing is I guess we do have to do a military survey in order to come out of this military. Then is that what you're saying, Keith? Correct. Cause they're all on military. All those public records are military records and you it's have to go banking. to the military to get them to remove it. How do you do that? Who's the universal plenipotentiary power of militaries? The postal system. Not the post office, not the postal system, the postal system. system. Guess what? Those are postmasters. Those are the ones that people that are subject to the postmaster go to to make requests. I am a post marshal. I marshal my post and I post my own posts everywhere. If you deny that, then you have to rebut it appropriately because it's posted in the public domain. And that's what I'm talking about. It's just trickling down. Having it's public address, information not- already. If, if, if everybody would have been publishing this stuff a long time ago, I'd have learned it. Somebody would have taught me. 
would have said, yeah, see, it says it right here in this book. But they don't write this stuff in those books for everybody to read. Now that we've got the internet, we can read it all. And I suggest you start doing it. Everywhere I read it, Could it's you in plain imagine writing. if they were like, oh, we don't have jurisdiction over you personally because you're not enrolled in the military. We don't have jurisdiction over what you're doing. But, oh, you use an address. So all of a sudden now we have jurisdiction. doesn't work that way. Exactly. You have to, they have way. to prove that they well, have jurisdiction worked, all the way around. It worked that way for me. It worked for me whenever I changed in their system where they know that they're not allowed to come on this location. It was a, all it was was a notification of the difference that I know the difference between what they're doing and what I'm doing and that I'm not fish farming. I'm not doing aquaponics. I'm not in the military. I'm not holding an uh, official office in their corporate management trust. And that's really where they only have jurisdiction, right? Territorial ju- If it's been ceded or if someone but, voluntarily agrees. But please explain, Lori. Please don't mislead people because we're not doing anything in the business realm. You changed your address right, that's what using I a mid and a crid for a commercial account. No, that's not how I did it. That's that what was, a mid and crid is. It's account. a commercial account. Otherwise, yeah, you don't have not, to file it. But, but, but that's not what it was. Well, it, is. To it is. If you filed a mid and a no, crit, it is a commercial so account. What did you I guarantee file? you. Well, what did you file? Wait, I agree with you, Keith, that doing a mid and a crit is an actual commercial situation where one can claim to be a post marshal as well as the executive of their their state. But are you, can you guys hear me still? Yeah. yeah, we can. I'm waiting to know what did you send and who did you oh. send it to? Lori? Terrible connection. Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a, it, it's moving to a rural route. Hold on, though. It's what a, did you a, fill out? Did you just r- take a blank sheet of paper, write, mm-hmm. I'm not in your jurisdiction, and send it off to who? On With with one of their forms. Okay. Yeah, you're using I think their it was forms, 40, so you're still in commercial. No, no, no. Attached. Attached. It was a notice given to the post marshal. Given okay. to all of them. And how, this when you say location, it works, when you say it works, how do you okay. know it works? Because of an interaction that I had with some armed people <laughs> that can't come onto this location because it's, they don't, we're, they recognize in their system. That it's we're going to shut down here real soon, but I will open it up again for a short time. Yeah, I want to hear what Lori did. Yeah, I think we're on to something really good tonight. I moved. Can you hear me now? Sorry, I have a really terrible connection. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, but it's about to hang up in like two yep. seconds. We're gonna come back okay, though. So, go to my po- okay. go to my page and we'll come back. Okay, good. All right, we'll see everybody in a few minutes. <laughs> 